Let's take a look at a problem that deals with kinetic energy. How fast much a 3,000 kilogram elephant move to have the same kinetic energy as a 65 kilogram sprinter running at 10 meters per second? So we're going to set our kinetic energies equal to each other. We have elephant, kinetic energy of the elephant, equal to the kinetic energy of the sprinter. And the equation for kinetic energy is 1 over 2 m v squared. I'm going to set these two equal to each other. Okay, uh, you'll notice that the halves will cancel out. The mass of the elephant is 3,000 times ve squared equal to the sprinter is 65 kilogram times 10 meters per second, and this is squared. If I solve for VE squared, I divide um, both sides by 3,000. On the right-hand side, I get 2.17. I need to square root, and so VE is going to be 1.47 meters per second. Okay, uh, so this just reminds us that the equation for kinetic energy, uh, the energy of motion, is equal to 1 over 2 mv squared. Now we'll take a look at a problem dealing with work and power. A weightlifter lifts uh, raises 254 kilograms of weights, a distance of 2.2 meters in 2.8 seconds. How much work is done by the weightlifter? Okay, so we'll start with part A. Work is equal to the force times the displacement times cosine theta. The force here uh, to lift an op to lift this object up to lift an object straight up is going to be equal to the weight of the object. And so you need a minimum amount of force which is equal to the weight of the object to lift that object up at constant velocity. Now you could lift it with more force and it would accelerate, but minimum, minimum force you need to lift it up, constant velocity, uh, would be the weight. So I'm going to substitute that in for force. So this is going to be mg d cosine theta. So now I'm going to substitute in the numbers. The mass is 254. Uh, for g, I'm going to use 10. Uh, D is 2.2 and cosine it's in the same direction so I'm lifting it up the force is up so that is going to be uh, this is going to be just 1 and we get 5,588 joules okay take a look at part B what is the power output so power is the work divided by time. And the work here is 5,588 joules, which we just calculated, divided by 2.8 seconds, and we get 1,996 watts. You could also round it and write in scientific notation 2.0 times 10 to the third watts, and that would give me the same answer. Here's another question dealing with kinetic energy. A 1,480 kilogram car is moving with a speed of 16.4 meters per second. What is the kinetic energy? So we know that kinetic energy is equal to 1 over 2 mv squared. So I'm going to substitute 1 half 1,480 times 16.4 squared, and we get 199,030 joules. Okay, the second part is asking, what if the car speed doubles? Does the kinetic energy double? And you'll see here that it does not because if the speed doubles, if this is times two, the top part is going to be it's going to be squared, right, because there's a square there, which means that the right side is four times, because it's two, it's double and then squared four times. On the left-hand side, it needs to change by four times so that the left is equal to the right-hand side. So uh, does the kinetic energy double? No. The answer is no. It's actually going to be um, four times. Uh, the kinetic energy will go up uh, four times because that speed is squared in the equation. Now we'll take a look at a problem where we will be applying the work energy theorem. 
A car is traveling with a speed of 37.1 meters per second. Seeing red lights ahead, the driver applies the brakes and the 1,129 kilogram car skids to a stop. The braking distance is 62.6 .6 meters. What is the braking force acting on the car? So the first thing I want to do is indicate my uh, positive direction, which I will make to the right. And then I'm going to just draw a little sketch uh, representing this car. So it's initially it's going to the right with the initial velocity, and then it's going to uh, come to a stop. So at the end here, it's got uh, final velocity is zero. So this will be zero. And then in between, it's going to have a force to the left. So just a quick way to represent what's going on in this situation. The mass is 1,129, 1,129 kilograms. And the car is initially going at 37.1 meters per second. So multiplying the mass times the velocity, I get the kinetic energy, which is 70, 776,983 joules. And then the final kinetic energy is zero because it comes to a stop. So we're looking for the braking force. We're looking for this number right here. That's the number we're looking for. Uh, to find that, we need to figure out what the work is. And the work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That's the work energy theorem. And these two numbers, these two numbers, the kinetic energy initial plus the work is equal to the kinetic energy final. Let me just make sure you can uh, see how I got that. So we know that work is uh, equal to the Ke final minus Ke initial. Uh, if I move the, if I add Ke on both sides, Kei on both sides, then I get that the work, that the Ke, if I move it to the left, I get Ke initial plus the work is equal to Ke final. So that's how I get that relationship there. So, which means that the Kei plus something equals zero. Well, what is it going to equal? That would be equal to zero. So it's going to be just be negative 776,983 joules. The work is the same because of the work energy theorem. And then I know that the distance here is 62.6 .6 meters. And then so to calculate the force, we know that work equals force times displacement. And so force is equal to work divided by the displacement. And the work is 776 negative 1,983 joules divided by 62.6 .6 meters. And we end up with 12,412 newtons. And it'll be negative. And the reason it's negative is because this force is towards the left. So it's 12,000. 412 newtons. Okay, so to calculate the force, what we did first was we found the change in kinetic energy, which is equal to work. And we know that work is equal to force times displacement. We solve for force using the work divided by displacement. And it is negative because the force is towards the left, and we made right positive. Now, this bar graph is help to help us understand this conceptually that we start off with a certain amount of kinetic energy. There was negative work done by the brakes, and we end up with zero amount of kinetic energy afterwards. Now we'll take a look at another problem, another work energy problem. A student is pushing a 20.1 kilogram cart through the hallways with a speed of 3.36 meters per second. He momentarily pulls back on the cart with 42.7 newtons of force to slow it to 1.32 meters per second. Calculate the distance over which the backward force was applied to the cart during the slowing down period. So I'm going to first start with my positive direction. I'm going to make right positive, and it's arbitrary. You can make whatever direction positive you want as long as you're consistent. The object is moving towards the right with the initial velocity. And then the uh, there's a force uh, slowing it down, so that force is going to be towards the left. And the object at the end is still moving, but at a slower speed. It's still moving at a speed of 1.32.
So we'll go ahead and write that down right here, 1.32 meters per second. The cart is 20.1 kilograms, 20.1 kilograms, initially with a speed of 3.36 meters per second. So uh, kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv squared. So I take 1 over 2 times 20.1 times 3.36 squared and I get 113.5 joules. So I'm going to write that here, 113.5 joules. Uh, and then also for the final kinetic energy, so that's the initial, that's the initial. And then for the final, it has the same mass, but now the speed is less, 1.32 squared. And we get 17, 0.51 joules. I'm going to write that right here, 17.51 joules. So to ca calculate the change in kinetic energy, I take the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, I get negative 96, negative 96, and I know the force was 42.7, and that was force in the negative direction. Uh, so we're looking for the displacement. We know that work is force times displacement, so that means displacement is work divided by force, and the work is negative 96, the force is negative 42.7 newtons, which is equal to 2.25 meters. And 2.25 meters is what we're looking for. Now on the bottom, we're going to fill out this uh, bar chart uh, to help us understand kind of conceptually what's going on. So we start off with a certain amount of kinetic energy, uh, 100, about 113.5 uh, joules. And then uh, we have a, a negative work. Uh, so we have negative work. So our kinetic energy is decreasing. And then it leaves us with uh, some kinetic energy, not as much, 17.5 uh, joules of kinetic energy. Now we're going to take a look at a work energy problem where there are two forces acting on the object. Suppose that you push on the 30 kilogram package a constant force of 120 newtons through a distance of 0.8 meters and that the opposing friction force averages 5 newtons. Calculate the net work done on the package find the speed of the package at the end of the push. So once again, I'm going to make right positive, And this object is initially at rest and has a, a mass of 30 kilograms, which means that the initial kinetic energy is also going to be 0. And then there are two forces acting on this object. The force uh, for, to the right, uh, I'm going to label this 120 newtons and a force to the left of 5 newtons. And then afterwards the object is going to be moving uh, to the right and we'll lay that, label that VF. It has the same amount of mass, I'm going to write that there, and it also tells us that there's a force to the right, a force to the left, so the net force, okay, so right here I'm going to put down the net force, is going to be 120 minus 5 because they're in opposite directions, so it's going to be 115, and the distance is 0.8 meters. And that if I multiply the force times displacement, I get 92, 92 joules, uh, which is equal to the change in kinetic energy, 92 joules. So uh, 0 plus 92, the kinetic energy initial plus the work, uh, is equal to the final kinetic energy of 92 joules. So in the bar chart here, uh, I can create my... Um, the initial kinetic energy will have nothing. The work uh, bar, bar will be 92, and then the final kinetic energy will also be 92 as well.